Eric Heroes. And the key aim of today really is to look at ways of um, introducing young people to, to ways of celebrating our, our Scottish culture and heritage, but we're using various different artists and art workshops to really look at how young people can achieve this. I think because we live in a multicultural society, we tend to forget or put in the back burner the very rich heritage and culture that we in Scotland have. So events such as this, especially during homecoming year, are very important to expose the children to the culture, to the song and to the dance of Scotland. We have Scottish traditions or dance who came down from Aberdeen and they're just looking at fusing different um, form, art, um, dance forms together um, and looking at traditional dance forms and how, how they have sort of progressed over time and where they are today and how we work with them in schools. First of all this morning uh, when the children came in, sat them down and uh, just asking them um, what type of Scottish dance they are familiar with um, and we discussed Cayley dance and we had Gay Gordons and, and the, the dances that they learn at school for their Christmas parties and then we talked about um, the other forms of Scottish dance, Highland and so you've got Cayley, you've got Highland and Step, Hebridean, Shetland, Historic and some of them um, they, they didn't even know existed so then we got them up. Man lady, good, because that's your right shoulder so you should win your right. And we were learning some Cayley dances, some new ones and some more kind of traditional ones that have been uh, around for hundreds of years that, that you learn in school and ones that you don't. So the kids learned um, one called the Reaver's Gallop and they learned the Virginia Reel and then just to finish off they've been learning the Flying Scotsman. So lots of circle dances, partner dances, set dances and, and getting them to dance with each other. From different, they're all from different schools trying to get them to interact and mingle and get to know each other. And, dance for fun and some exercise. We um, also have some um, played workshops which are kilt making. The young people are looking at the importance of um, kilt making, how that was used for the clans way back in, in historical times and, and what it symbolises symbolises in our society. Sit down so you're both sitting a bit here. I'm a costume interpreter and I've been in the 18th century women's dress that would be seen in Scotland. What I've been doing with the kids is showing them how the plaid was now was worn then and how it's now the kilt that we wear now. So what I've been doing is showing them how to wear the plaid, how to pleat it up and giving them an idea of what it was like back then for people in the time that wore the actual plaid. I, I, I didn't know that was a kilt because I didn't, they, I've never sold one like that and it doesn't look like one that's in shorts. The children were very surprised when they found out it was just one large piece of material, it was just like a big blanket. The workshop that we do with the objects is now it's to fit in with the active learning, the curriculum of excellence that the schools are all following now. So really it was just objects of the time and it was to get their minds working all together sort of thing to see if they could come up with what it was. What we're doing is we, have, we get an object to every group, we get different objects and we got this uh, we think it's a, a paintbrush, a brush or a duster and you, what you have to do is you have to like, let everybody feel it and pass it around, let everybody feel it and give your ideas what you think it is. We also have some storytelling workshops that's going on and those storytelling workshops are basically interactive workshops um, giving young children the experience and a flavour of exactly what, would be, what would it would have been like to have lived back in those times. When um, they first come in they usually are a wee bit shy to start with because the first thing they see is someone in period costume. They're not entirely sure what it is, but very quickly I've got them relaxed um, because when they are acting the part, they laugh with one another, they look at one another, they get frights with um, one another. The whole, they're all getting the same experience and very quickly the, the fear is gone, you know, the, the, the sense of unknowing. Very quickly that's gone. Uh, because they're actually doing the part, not me. He would tell us a word and we would act out what was happening. <laughs> and lots of people in the audience would make the sound effects. We made them noises when the door shut and when the dog came and the wind and the storms. Well, we're trying to put the kind of flesh on the bones of history. Um, you could look at a textbook and read about a castle, or you could read about a Jacobite, you could read about Mary Queen of Scots, but when you've actually got something in the flesh there, 
it makes it a lot more easy for them to understand and they're usually a wee bit more enthusiastic after the visit because they've now got a better idea. It was a lot more fun being part of the story than just listening to it. Today, the workshops that the young people are taking part in, it's really important because it's a different way of learning. It's, it's, it's a good way of celebrating a, a curriculum for excellence um, in particular. It's taking young people out of the classroom, it's taking them into a different environment and that in itself helps children be more enthusiastic and give them a thirst to learn more. And in a more laid back environment working with individuals and, and um, people that are on the same level as them and the artists that we've chosen certainly do help to, to give the edge to the work that we're doing. So it just helps to encourage young people to really engage in, in a different way of learning and helps it be a wee bit more of an interactive and fun-filled experience. We've just met today, that's Emma and that's Chloe. It's been really fun like doing all the activities today and finding out more about Scotland. And that was the way we used to tell stories in the past and it's a real fun way I think. Today is a taster of lots of different aspects of Scottish culture. Um, the different types of sessions that the children are taking part in are very interesting. They're aimed specifically at this age group. Um, they're all factual and hopefully what this will do will enable the children to have a liking for it so that they will continue to participate. And as well this helps in terms of the legacy of what Scotland is about, celebrating our, our Scottish culture and our, our heritage and our identity. For example, um, from the Scottish traditional dancing that they're taking part in today, um, they will learn some dances that in the future I'm sure they'll be whisked up onto the floor at a wedding to do the Gay Gordons or something like that. Um, it's just basically creating awareness of their culture, their heritage and giving them ownership of it and giving them the confidence to say, yeah, I know how to do that. And in terms of this, this allows young people to take this information, take it back to the school, take it to their parents, their grandparents, and also in time to their own children and their own grandchildren. So it's encouraging them to help look at how we can celebrate ourselves and what's important about being Scottish.